Flag of Bologna, Genoa, Milan, and England. Wow, look at how different they all look. What original and creative ideas from all four of these places. The slightly different reds among all of them really helps to distinguish all four, I guess. Okay, the bigger problem here is that three of these places are in Italy. That's that's an issue. Bologna is an Italian province. Genoa and Milan are both cities, and they're actually not even that far away from each other. And then, of course, we all know there's there's England. But that's not Italy. Even Bologna is pretty far up there in the north of the country. Is part of the problem the fact that they're all trying to copy their coat of arms? That could be the issue, at least for Genoa and Milan. Apparently, people are claiming Genoa is actually the original original. I was today years old when I realized the flags of the three countries in the UK merged to form the flag on the UK. That's right, England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Ireland come together to form the Union Jack, although there is a certain dragon nation that are left off the list. Sorry, Wales. I'm convinced some of you didn't go to school. Okay, the problem with this is I didn't learn this either until I was like, I don't know, 20-something. They never taught us this in school. I never once learned this, because this really is one of those mind-blowing things that you kind of never forget about once you find out. Maybe other states in the U.S. that are taught this, specifically like in New England, that would make sense. I can tell you from first-hand experience here in Southern California, they did not feel like that should be a part of the educational criteria. For some reason, they always just taught us Californian history all the time. It's so boring. My grandma has worn the same shirt with red, white, and blue and stars to celebrate the 4th of July for 25 years. Every year, she wears the exact same shirt. Thanks to the World Cup, we finally noticed it's the flag of Panama. Over 25 years of treason. Who would have known grandma was actually a Panamanian nationalist this whole time? I knew they had a couple sleeper cells in our country. To be fair, this is something that even I, who stare at maps like every day for a living, probably would have not noticed. This looks like a regular shirt to me. That's why I'm trying to start a similar trend, except by wearing this shirt every 4th of July. I'm not even joking, it's actually coming through Amazon right now. Here are some of the worst flag proposals of all time. Here we have the modern day Indian flag, but back in 1922, this is what Gandhi wanted. This is actually a reproduction of Gandhi's flag that he introduced to Congress back in 1921. I actually understand the importance of the Charka here for India, but the Bulgarian representation really doesn't make sense to me. The nation of Bulgaria had been using these colors in this order since 1879, basically like 50 years before Gandhi introduced that one. The other funny thing is, it's not even like Bulgaria is that far away. I mean, 1921, this was still all the British Raj, so there was just Iran and Turkey separating them from Bulgaria, basically. Okay, I always joke about this, but I think the access to this information is a lot harder than we're probably considering back in the 1920s. I'm not everyone had access to like all world flags at their fingertips. I still think it's pretty funny though. Here we have the current flag of Kuwait, but back in 1906, they wanted to go something like this. Wow, that is beautiful. I'm going to trust that it is actually spelled like this in um, a closer language, or is this just designed by like some British guy out there that didn't know how to spell? Oh, nope, this is how you spell Kuwait in French. Okay, just making sure. I went with British originally because remember Kuwait was also a British colony, just like India with the British Raj. So far I'm noticing a theme with these really bad flag proposals. And another former British colony. This time we have Jamaica, and back in 1962 they wanted to, oh yeah, they the classic Russian crocodile. Everyone knows about this one. I wonder if part of the problem was that like when these places were under the British Empire, their flags were just so boring and just I don't know, bad, uninteresting, that like when they had to come up with flag proposals, you know, if this is all you're basing your knowledge off of with when it comes to flags, like yeah, I can see why you would have some bad ideas. Finally, the last one, Egypt, again, another former British colony. This was their suggestion in 1952. Wow. This really does confirm my theory though, this right here, putting the little like former British copyright symbol up in the top corner. Of course, the Union Jack's usually over here. However, I do have to admit before Egypt was fully independent, uh, they did just have like a cool green flag with the moon and stars. Actually, I feel like they should have just stayed with this one. This one looks cool. I guess they kept the green and white, but man, this is so bad. Again, I think we have to blame the British here for all this. This person asks, I wonder if this led to some confusion on the battlefield. We have a war between the People's Republic of China and the Republic of China, but also the Union of Burma. Did they do this on purpose just for a little bit of trolling? I mean, it's literally a star too. They just added like a couple more. They only had this for a couple of decades. 
decades, but uh, it's interesting, that's for sure. And again, Burma, another former British colony. We need to talk about the official flag of Lake Cebu in the Philippines. This literally looks like the worst thing of all time. It is a municipality of this lake. It's not a city, luckily, for better or for worse. I don't know. Maybe it's worse because it covers more area. All right, luckily for the world's sake, this is actually just a parade banner. It's not the actual flag. I actually was going to be so depressed that it's taken the world this long to find out. Like, I, I think this would have easily been the worst flag of all time. There's no question. There's no question. Although, when I look it up on Wikipedia, this is the flag shown. <laughs> please, no, please. Oh my gosh. This can't be right. This has got to be one of those times where Wikipedia is wrong, right? Please. No! Just, just slap the official seal on like a white background and call it a day. That, that would be better. No, I, f I refuse to believe this. Uh, there's no way. If this is the actual official flag, we need all of the people in the Philippines to start a revolt right now. Here's an alternative flag of Lake Cebu, which, I mean, it is better. They, they did my idea. They, I mean, they made it a little bit fancier. <laughs> just, just put a white background, please. It doesn't need to be like all fancy with these patterns. I, I, I think just the white is, is better. You can, you can put a different quote color just just make it a, a solid flat color at least it's not flying outside the city hall this is just the filipino flag whether it's a flag or not even if it is just a regular parade banner this is still like come on what what is this look look i'll design a better flag in two seconds like there you go bam just take this you don't even gotta pay me don't even center it put it off the side that's cool japan but i blew up the sun a little over eight minutes ago oh very nice everything looks pretty good to me Oh, that's right. If you blew up the sun, it would take a couple minutes. I thought it was seven minutes. Man, that flag of Japan with the animation. This also looks like an animation of what happened at... <laughs> I don't even know if I can say it. My crush has this flag in her bio. Can you please tell me what country it is? Oh, this is said by Italian soldier in 1946. Survived the war, but I don't know if he's going to be prepared to know this. It's Switzerland! Oh, that's right. That's right. You know what? It's probably better just to say that. It's neutral. It's neutral. Just, yeah. Someone recreated the Isle of Man flag, but decided to make it the Isle of Cat. I always thought the Isle of Man should just call themselves the Isle of leg. I felt like that was gonna be funnier when I said it. I guess we could also say instead of Sicily, it is the Isle of, um, I don't know. It's cats, kitty. It's actually amazing this owner was able to do this. What a beautiful image right here. This should be the flag for the island of Cyprus. There's 1.5 million stray cats running around there. If every cat ate one human, the cats would still outnumber everyone. Could just take it all over. The UK, but something is really wrong. I'm actually trying to figure out what exactly is wrong with it. Okay, the only thing, it's just a really small change. The white bars just go like this and they connect. For some reason, the red doesn't connect on the edges. In other words, everything else would be fine, I, I think. That's all you have to do is just extend the white bars a little bit in each corner. Oh, well, also, I think the middle one needs to be made a little bit thicker, but for the most part, yeah. Oh, that's the other key missing ingredient. The edges are also off-centered, which is really confusing to me. Something you'd never notice until someone points it out and then you can never forget. It always looks wrong now. These are the 10 most populated cities in Russia and their flags. We're gonna go in order from most people to least, starting in obviously Moscow. I'm gonna be honest, I think the places with the most people are gonna have the best flags, so this is probably gonna be the best one that we see out of Russia. This one is pretty cool, I think. This one is the city of St. Petersburg. I like the old throwback they got up here. I'm just gonna show this city's name because I don't want to butcher the pronunciation. This just looks incredibly boring. I'm sorry to say. It actually looks like a lot of the, like, read designed U.S. state flags that I see. We can't get a little bit more creative. Yet Cater Inberg. Like, I feel like I'd prefer this. It's a little bit ugly, I think, with the color combination, but, I mean, at least it has character. You gotta give it that. Here we go. Kazan. This looks like some sort of very strange chicken dragon. What is that? I don't even know. It's definitely clearly been around for a long time. It actually looks pretty terrifying, to be honest. We need to have a battle royale of, like, all the creatures that are found on flags. Who would win? My money might be on this guy. Like, what is the dragon from Bhutan really gonna do? He's holding four Four apples for some reason. We've got a majestic reindeer, an interesting camel, a lion with a shovel. You wouldn't want to see that guy in a back alley. Russia's definitely got a unique take on making flags, but I gotta give them more points because I think they're better than U.S. state flags. One man's take on how to solve the Kashmir conflict. What we have to do is take the flag of India, but just certain parts of it, and merge it with the flag of Pakistan. That sounds like a great idea. It's like the best of both worlds. And with that, we can find the new flag of Kashmir. Seems simple enough.
stuff. Why didn't we come up with this before? Hold on, what does China think about this whole thing, though? I don't even know how you can represent them because they're red and yellow and they have star. Maybe, maybe this, maybe this is like a star. It's definitely a big old mess over here. I, I think, I think China can be cool with it. Like how most maps just try to stay as far away from having to draw lines on it as possible. No matter what, you're gonna upset a lot of people. This person lists all the flags they saw on a walk in Germany. I live in Germany and it is very uncommon to hang flags outside of your house here. Weird, he only saw one flag in all of Germany and it wasn't even a German flag. It was this weird boring one with black text and white background. Expected nothing else here from Germany. What's interesting is that Germany does have some pretty fascinating flags just throughout their provinces. Obviously like the Bavarian flag, it can also be used as a nice like a uh, table mat. The best part about it is no one would have any idea that I'm actually a Bavarian nationalist. But another favorite of mine that Germany has is Berlin. This is because I've been able to see it on the lager for so many years. There's the historic Brandenburg flag. Gotta bring back just the yellow and black. I don't think I've ever seen this checkered Bremen flag. We've got Indonesia. Germany with a horse on it. Germany with a coat of arms on it. Germany with a copyright symbol on it. Germany with a horizontal uh, Italy. I like how Saxony is one of the only places rocking the green. And they really like that black and yellow combination. Or some just like to copy and flip uh, yeah, it's kind of. Well, this is just straight up Yugoslavia. I hate to say it, but I do think that, like, Russia's obsession with animals and slapping them on flags is- I mean, these are just historic. It's, it's hard to- it's hard to criticize. Like, you can't really do that when, like, these places have been using these symbols for, you know, centuries. The U.S. state flags, though, that is a whole nother story. Here are flags made more realistic. Egypt, of course, with their beautiful eagle. Oh, I like how this- yeah, it's, like, dark down here. I was gonna say, what's gonna be, like, the black part? I like Argentina, but, man, they really gotta- have like the creepy face on it though. At least put the Teletubby sun on there. And there's Turkey, which looks like this could have literally been shot in Turkey. And then finally Brazil. It looks like a flower almost. I'm now just realizing that the Brazilian flag looks like you're like in the Amazon rainforest at night looking up at the galaxy or whatever. At least that's what this is making me think. I love those realistic flags. Flag design idea for places without much wind. This would definitely help. I mean, because you need to have it like feel like it's, you know, flowing in the background. I don't know. I don't really my brain does not process how exactly this works. Why? Wow. This is just a still image. It's not even a- I'm just scrolling. How is this possible? My mind is melting. That makes me think, like, what places have the least wind? This might be the strangest Google search I've ever done. Just so random. Well, who, who looks for this? Where is the least windy place? Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Least windy, at least in the U.S., with an average annual wind speed of 4.1 miles. Wind can be incredibly annoying, especially when you're trying to film something. Completely ruins the mic. I guess the way we could figure this out is to see which places don't use a lot of wind energy, but there's a lot of other factors that fall behind that. Flag of England, if it was colonized by Milan, which was colonized by Genoa, which was colonized by Bull. Man, I looked at the pronunciation for this place and then forgot it by the end of the video. This is the only way we're gonna actually be able to successfully get flag inception. I'm glad that each country is represented with their weird different tones of red. And big thanks to my patrons. I am the kidnapper and I have moved Drew to a Patagonian um, village. Australia is real. Drew I'm not is a paid Argentinian actor. The grandpa. slow depressing Drew portal collapse. Colorblind. Asher. Two hundred. Dragon. Amateur. Archaeologist. Fresh. Brian, the imposter, Robert Pye, Gary Knows, Best Girl, Tip Polish, Wine, 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 Wine